Garrett, congressional Republicans are making a visit to the border in, in a matter of hours. This visit, again, coming as Congress preparing to consider two immigration bills this week. Uh, what do we expect to hear from Republicans? What's the point that they're hoping to make with the visit? Right, so there's the humanitarian issue here and the political issue. There will be two immigration bills debated and voted on later this week that deal with the dream with uh, farm workers, but they don't deal with the problem that we're seeing develop at the border, which is both seasonal and, frankly, generational. It goes back uh, administration after administration. In this case now, we are seeing this surge of unaccompanied minors, primarily from Central American countries, making their way through Mexico and presenting themselves at the border. Now we're hearing from these House Republicans who are saying this is a result of Biden administration changes in policies, loosening of restrictions that were put in place by the Trump administration, and they say, even by a change in tone from the Biden administration that makes the U.S. seem more welcoming. They would like to reverse this, although they don't specify what policies they would put in place that would be more humane to do so. Immigration activists and Democrats argue that these problems far predate the current administration and, in fact, in many cases, were made worse by those draconian policies of the Trump administration. Late last night, I interviewed Veronica Escobar, who's the Democrat who represents the El Paso area, and I asked her about this. Take a listen to her response. Did the United States waste the last four years building walls instead of trying to address the root causes of this? 100%. When you think about the tens of billions of dollars that we have spent in the last four years alone, and if you look at the approach to border and immigration policy over you know, more than a decade, the hundreds of billions of dollars that have been expended, what's changed? Craig, the electoral politics of this are also a driver. Republicans are united in wanting stronger border security and a focus on those issues. But the reality is this fence behind me, yesterday our crew watched a couple of guys with a makeshift ladder climb it and hop over. So this is not just a border security issue. It is going to require a whole of government response. And that's what I'll be pressing these congressional Republicans about later today. And presumably those folks who jumped the fence there uh, saw the cameras and they were not deterred by that. Yeah, that's right. They were they were and they were apprehended by Border Patrol fairly quickly. And be, with the policies that are in place now, if they were adults and from our vantage point, they appeared to be, they will be sent back. The border is still entirely closed to uh, asylum seekers who are not those unaccompanied children. Jacob Sobroff joins the conversation now. Jacob is with us um, from outside NASA Moffett Federal Airfield in the San Francisco Bay Area. And he's there because, Jacob, as I understand it, this is a site that HHS is considering as a, a potential influx shelter for migrant children. Uh, how, how is that going to work and what are you seeing on the ground there? Yeah, that's exactly right, Craig. I wanted to explain to everybody why why am I here in the San Francisco Bay Area if we're talking about what's happening along the southwest border, a humanitarian crisis uh, of a backlog in, in Border Patrol facilities? And the answer is this is one of essentially the choke points. This is where uh, I think the Biden administration and the federal government, if it was up to them, would like those children to be relocated to if this facility turns out to be suitable in the mind's eye of health and human services and the child welfare experts that normally care for kids that come to the United States unaccompanied are transferred from those border locations uh, into the care of what's called the Office of Refugee Resettlement. So here uh, at the Ames Research Center uh, at Moffett Field, uh, HHS came out here last week uh, with a team to basically assess if this uh, location is good enough to build what would be effectively a, a tent facility uh, or a soft-sided facility in order to bring in not only child welfare experts, but doctors, caseworkers, educators in some cases, even things like, uh, you know, a barber shop or entertainment for children while they're here. You know, I've been inside those HHS facilities before along the southwest border, and that's the whole idea, to get them out of what is effectively a humanitarian crisis in the border patrol facilities now uh, so that they can be in a place where they can be cared for before they're placed with a family member or a sponsor in the interior. And the problem is they can't get 
a facility here up and running fast enough to alleviate the crisis today, tomorrow, maybe not even in the next week. And that, as uh, Garrett was explaining, is why FEMA has been brought in and is now involved. Um, but uh, rest assured, uh, this is something that the Biden administration would like to have uh, yesterday, uh, and they don't have it yet. And that's why we're seeing the situation that we have down at the border. Jacob, stand by for me if you can. Jim Messina, you know, as, as we heard from Garrett there a few moments ago, Republicans appear to be trying to make this solely a Biden administration crisis so far. Uh, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain, House Speaker Pelosi, they weighed in on that over the weekend. We inherited a real lack of capacity. Uh, it's hard to ramp up that capacity. You can't just take children and put them in a hotel room. This is a humanitarian challenge to all of us. Uh, what the administration has inherited is a broken system at the border, and they are working to correct that. So, Jim, I mean, they're, they're pointing the finger at the Trump administration. Uh, but, but how much longer will they be able to do that? At what point will American voters start to blame this president uh, for what appears to be uh, another crisis at the border? Look, I think American voters understand that this has two, uh, pr two reasons why we have this crisis. The first is the COVID uh, absolute destruction of the economy of Central uh, America and Mexico. And the second is the Trump administration's policies over the last four years. There is no plan in place. There is no way to test these kids for COVID. There's no way to deal with these kids, as, as Jacob just reported. So I think voters understand that we're a long ways away from the next election. The two most important things people want to see are a plan in place, which the administration is racing to get. They're only about seven weeks in here. You can't fix in seven weeks what took four years to break. Uh, and I think people are going to give them some time to deal with this crisis at the border. Hey, Jacob, let me come back to you for a moment, if I can. I, I recall um, the description um, that was used during the, the Trump administration in terms of the facilities. We heard a lot of talk about cages, children being held in cages. Do we know if that's still the case right now? Uh, specifically, the facility I was in, Greg, the McAllen Central Processing Station in McAllen, Texas, they also call it Ursula, is where I saw the children held in cages in 2018 at the height of the family separation crisis. I think it's really important for everybody to understand a couple things. Number one, that facility very specifically has been closed for renovations under a, a congressional appropriation bill that included things like removing the cages. Um, the facilities along the border right now are effectively the same types of facilities. So whether you call them cages or plexiglass dividers or whatever the Border Patrol is using now, uh, Secretary Mayorka said it, uh, take it from me who's seen these places with my own eyes, those are not places for children to be. Um, and so whether or not there are cages, um, I think is beside the point. The point is kids are in effectively border jails right now, and they shouldn't be uh, there. They should be in uh, permanent facilities run by child welfare specialists at the Office of Refugee Resettlement. Uh, in, in sort of the next best case, they should be at influx facilities, temporary ORR shelters with child welfare professionals, like they're looking at setting up here at this NASA facility in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, but the whole problem is kids are in the border jails right now. I mean, that's the bottom line. It is a humanitarian crisis that the Biden administration faces. And there are important questions to answer. Why aren't there enough influx facilities or ORR shelters ready today. Did the Trump administration know uh, and project an influx and not prepare for this? Did the Biden administration know and they weren't able to stand this up uh, quickly enough because they did move on influx, but not until February? I mean, I think those are questions that both the former Trump administration and the current Biden administration needs to answer. But even more importantly, they just need to find capacity for children uh, that is humane uh, and fair and safe to match the rhetoric that this administration has said they want to approach the immigration system with. And they need to do it now. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.